The purpose of this video is to review how to apply a bill to a purchase order that is processed in Odoo's purchasing application. First thing you're going to want to do is to open up the purchasing app and create an RFQ. See the status up here of the actual order. You'll be able to see the different functions up here as well. You know, very simple, right? Add your vendor, an order date. If there's a vendor reference, you can put that in here. Then you add your products. We'll just product X. 1250. You'll also see on the product template, if I open it up, under purchasing, you'll see I can manage all the different vendors and the corresponding prices that I pay these vendors for this specific product. And I can control the vendor product name, the vendor product code, the lead time for this vendor, and the price for this vendor. And if there's a price list, meaning if I buy 10 units, then I pay $11, for instance. Right? That would be a rule you could add to this line. And I could add another rule, and I could say, uh, for instance, vendor X, anything above zero, pays 10. And you'll see it'll apply that rule. And I can do, um, you know, 11 will be 11, 9 would be 10, and the rule will be in place. So once you actually have your order here, let's X that out, this is an RFQ, right? The status is still RFQ. It hasn't been sent yet. I can always send my, my vendor uh, RFQ right out of the system here. It'll ask for the vendor's email because I don't have one in here yet for this test environment. Here it is, and it'll have an attachment PDF of, of this uh, RFQ, which the vendor would receive. Very simple. Now, once I send this out, the status changes to RFQ sent, and I can track everything down here. I can always pull it up here in the top right. And once I get confirmation from this vendor of a price that we agree on, I can confirm the order and that changes it to a purchase order and generates the incoming delivery receipt for these products specified on the uh, purchase order. And I can see the source document which generated this incoming receipt uh, as PO1. Now, um, PO1, and this is where I'll go back into discussing the product here. So the next step here would be to receive the products. I can also create a bill if I want to. The way I have it set up at the product level I'm going to jump into the product quickly here, is under purchasing, you'll see I control my, my vendor payments based on either ordered or received quantities. In this example, I have it on received quantities. So the system is going to prompt me to receive. It's not going to tell my, my, uh, my accounting team to generate a vendor bill until I receive the quantities. And if I want to do it on ordered quantities, then every time I order that product, it would generate a vendor bill based on the receipt uh, based on the confirmation of the purchase order. So now if I go back to purchase order one, you'll see once I receive the products, and I'll just quickly validate, mark all is done, and I go back to the PO, the next step is to create the vendor bill, just like that. You can also see incoming products and vendor bills here. If I create my bill off this PO, there it is, bill 001, Here's the product. Here's the source document that I'm paying this against. And I can save it. You'll see up here the purchase representative, the journal, the account that it's going to post to. And once I validate it, post my journal entries right here. And I can see those here. Credits, accounts payable, debits, tax paid expenses. And just like that, your accounting team, when I go into the accounting app, right, I could also have done that from the accounting app, they will see their vendor bills here and they can see the status is open and you'll easily be able to filter draft open in payment paid or overdue you know show me what's open and I can easily group by vendor see the total open uh, vendor bills that I have with this particular vendor now to make a payment against this there's two ways to do it the first way is to open this up and register the payment manually from the bill like this and I can say it's a check and it'll show me the amount of words I want to pay all that. The second way is to go to vendors uh, payments and create a payment manually. And you can do that by doing create vendor, select the partner. We received an incoming bill for 1150. Save it and confirm. And just like that, I've created a payment and I can see the journal items for this payment right here. Credit, bank, debit, accounts payable. And then all I need to do now is reconcile. So I can always just click right from that payment to match. I can say, um, Vendor X, right, this bill, 
hit that payment, reconcile, and it reconciles those two journal items. And if I go back to the vendor bill, I'll see it's now marked as paid. So that's how you can um, attribute a vendor bill to a payment. And you could have many vendor bills in one payment. And in that instance, and what you would do there is uh, you would, let's go to create uh, a few vendor bills. Create, right, and I can add purchase order lines as well. So maybe if I want to auto-complete something, I can select it and it'll auto-complete in a previous purchase order that was in the system. Um, but I'll manually add a line for uh, 150. Validate, and I'll duplicate this to make it easy. And we'll say 1250, save, validate. Now we have two bills outstanding for a total of 259.91, or excuse me, 248.41. So 248.41, let's receive a payment for that. In, or let's create a payment for that, excuse me. And let's say we're gonna pay vendor X, the 248.41 that we currently have open, confirm it, match the payments, and I can easily say this payment will take care of these two bills, reconcile, and it reconciles the accounts payable uh, for those two bills, and I can easily see here in my vendor bill, everything is marked as paid now. So that's how it works, and it's the same kind of concept for invoicing as well, if you want to uh, manually uh, in inherit a payment for an invoice. Uh, are hitting accounts receivable. So that's how that works. Um, if you have any additional questions, um, please do let me know. I'm happy to drill into the details with you more. Thanks.